on. Hi there, uh, I'm Gary Zico in Los Angeles. I'm a cycling savvy instructor, which is a traffic cycling educational program of the American Bicycling Education Association, ABEA, on whose uh, board of directors I also serve. And this is the first in a series of videos with a, a Garmin VIRB 360 uh, video camera, uh, courtesy of Richard Wharton, that we're going to do some videos, uh, 360, to see what it's like to apply the principles of cycling savvy to the streets of Los Angeles. So uh, let's get going. I'm going to raise up the camera here a bit. to get a better perspective. That looks pretty well lined up. Lamp that down. And we are starting out on a Pershing Drive in the Playa del Rey neighborhood of the city of Los Angeles. Uh, behind me back there is Marina del Rey. We'll get down there eventually too. Up here is LAX. And we're going to uh, head up on Pershing here, which is going south. We've got two lanes. So I am going to control this right lane. And we're going to head over to Manchester Boulevard. Uh, and we'll talk more there about the three faces of Manchester Boulevard. Just want to say now that there are four dimensions of cycling savvy. The first is that we drive our bicycles, follow the rules of the road. Uh, we typically use a full lane. And that has many advantages that we'll talk about. Uh, we don't ride on the edge. We drive our bicycles. Second thing we do is communicate. So I need to get over to the left lane here. I look back. There are no cars now, but I see with my attentions. And really, we use hand signals, but and some hand signals we use are perhaps uh, specific to cycling savvy or something that we'll talk about later, but. The most important way of communicating to motorists is your lane position. And we'll see how that works up here. Uh, the other thing that we do is we cooperate. Are we trying to get along with our fellow road users? When we can let cars by, we do it. As long as we can do it safely and not at great inconvenience. And the fourth dimension is facilitation. We're just making it easier for ourselves and for other people on the road. So let's get back to Manchester. I just got on Manchester, the West End. This is a nice hill here, and we have parking. And so I am controlling this lane by riding to the left, uh, riding to the center of the lane or slightly left of the center, and that signals to any motorists behind, they need to change lanes to pass me. This guy's thinking of pulling out, he can see me better. So we have good lane position. Using the full lane, communicates to drivers behind that you need to change lanes to pass. Also gives you a better view at driveways and intersections. Um, and motors can see you better. And less hazards for the center. There's no road debris, the car's super clean. That tends to accumulate somewhere on the edge. Now this is sort of, I'll consider the first face of Manchester Boulevard. And this is a super wide lane. This could actually be striped with an extra lane. I can't control this whole lane. Uh, no reason I need to. So I am imagining that it's just divided into two. And out of the middle of what would be 
the added lane to the right. And that still keeps me out of the door zone, gives me good. So that is just the same as I would be in the travel lane, a normal size travel lane here. So, Thomas, we're going to face to the right here. Have a motorcycle next to me on the left. No traffic behind. I should say that it's uh, August 21st, Tuesday. 2018, and it's 11.31 uh, a.m., partly cloudy, 74 degrees here in Playa del Rey. So I'm going to continue across the intersection here and still imagining two lanes here. I'm either going to get over next to those parked cars or am I going to go over next to the left lane line. This is a good position to share the super wide lane at no risk. And it continues for a while. Now I see there's a hazard sign here up above which suggests that we're going to narrow. No cars behind. So I just move out. And now I'm controlling the right lane, the slow lane. This is an interesting situation. That parking lane is a bit less than seven feet wide, very tight. And this travel lane is a bit less than 10 feet wide, very tight. So this actually turns out to be a great place to cycle if you control the lane. It's the slow lane, it's my bike lane. Uh, in fact, it's so narrow here I don't like driving my car in this lane because it puts me in the door zone of anybody who may be opening their doors in the parked cars. So it's not great for driving a car. It's absolutely wonderful for cycling. How could it be made better? Well, you can always reduce speed limits and enforce them, but LA is not so good for that. They keep raising their speed limits to keep up with the traffic. And uh, you could put bikes may use for lane signs up here. And you can put both place centered shadows. And you'd have a really even better bicycle facility. Reduce the speed. I think the speed limit is 35. So it's just like this. And, Especially in California with speed limits of 25. So, anyway, so this is actually wonderful cycling. Now, there are neighborhood streets to the left. When I used to uh, take my two grandsons to nursery school down here, uh, sitting on the back of this bike, the extra cycle cargo bike, we would typically go through some of the neighborhoods, we live in Manchester. You get in the neighborhood streets, there's one with two roundabouts that I like. Uh, but if I was pressed for time, I'd come right down here. Uh, we're going by Manchester High School. You can see they have a covered parking deck with solar cells. So we are in the Westchester neighborhood now, I think, out of Playa del Rey. And we're still controlling the lane. I'm not going to make this light, unfortunately. I didn't give you much warning, so I'm going to have to start up from scratch. Notice that I moved even more to the left, so if there are any cars wanting to make a right turn on red, I can let them go right through. That, I call that release on red, uh, and that's part of the uh, cooperation dimension of cycling savvy. And if there was a lot, a lot of traffic backing up behind me, and I were going slow, and I wanted them to get past easy when the light turned green. I could pull fuel on the green, get over and wait at an empty parking spot there, let the traffic go. They'd be gone in 15, 20 seconds. This guy has no problem going around, so I'm not going to release. But I call that release on green. So those are just some examples of how we are cooperative. We assert our rights. 
as drivers of vehicles, as given to us in the California Vehicle Code, but always looking for ways to, to cooperate, make it easy for motorists. And if you look behind me now, you'll see all the traffic is basically in the left lane. Okay, this may be my last hill. So this is the second, the second face of Manchester. Very tight, parking two travel lanes, the right one, lane number two being, being quite narrow. And both the first, the super wide lane, and the second faces of Manchester are just really nice for cycling. Oh, well, it could be made better, as I mentioned. The lower speed limits in force, and bicycles may use full lane times and, and shallows in the center of this right travel lane. So now we get up to Lincoln Boulevard. This is a major north-south. This is part of the Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, so, this will begin the third phase of Manchester Boulevard. And actually right up here, there is the uh, Westchester Library of the City of LA, also the field office for our councilman uh, on the city board, Mike Bonin. So he has an office here. And there is a neighborhood council that is elected and meets and provides input to, to Mike about our neighborhood. The uh, neighborhood with respect to the city council is called uh, Playa Westchester and includes my neighborhood, Playa del Rey, this one Westchester and, and, and Playa Vista, which you will definitely visit someday. Looking for a chance to release, but no real problem, not much traffic behind. But now here we have a bike lane. And not only is it a bike lane, it's up against parking, so it's a dead zone bike lane. So, how to handle this? This bicycle is 32 inches wide. So, I need to stay five feet from the side. My bicycle of parked cars to be out of both the strike zone and the swerve zone. I mean, I'd be, I may be at three and a half feet, miss an opening door, but still swerve to the left instinctively to avoid an opening door and swerve into traffic and have a bad situation. So how am I going to do that? This is a narrow seven foot parking lane. Actually, it's less than that. It's a five foot bike lane. So basically, this entire bike lane is in a, a zone here, the door zone, where you could be seriously injured or killed by someone opening a traffic side door. Of course, that would be illegal for them to do so, but you'd be in worse shape. So what am I going to do here? A uh, number of things. I can use the bike lane when there's no parking. Now, when there is parking, for me to get out, I'm going to have to come right up on this line to get my clearance. So see what kind of, whoa, that's kind of close, isn't it? Whoa, that's kind of close. I don't think I like that very much. So I have, again, I can always use the bike lane to release traffic. There is none right now. But I didn't like that. So I'm going to get out here and control this lane. Maybe a little bit right of center now because I do have an extra room as a safety margin on the right. Uh, but now I'm going to get my four lane changes that I may get half of both by drivers who think, why aren't you in the bike lane? You know, I said, it's there for, why are you making me go around? 
But look at the lane changes. Look at the, the room I get. And that could be hassled by police officers. California vehicle code 21208 is a mandatory bike lane you saw. California. Now it has exceptions. If it's hazardous, I don't have to use it. Now, would an officer or a judge know about the doors on bike lane and why that entire bike lane is hazardous? Maybe, maybe not. I think it is. Uh, anywhere a right turn is authorized, you don't need to use a bike lane. So any driveways, any intersections, don't need to use a bike lane. Now here, don't need to be in the bike lane, but there's nobody parked. I see some traffic behind, and there's a light set here. Then I'm going to have to get back out, check behind, when I get back in the travel lane. So this is sort of dealing with the doors of bike lane. Here's the top. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, because now I have to be looking behind, see who's there. Am I going to get the clearance I want? There's a truck. See how narrow that parking lane is. Look at that. So, and this will work, but I can get hassled by other motorists, by law enforcement, and really have to pay a lot of attention all around me to know when the bike lane is reasonably safe and when I need to get out. So you compare that with the first and second faces of Manchester with the wide lane or the narrow lane. <laughs> And uh, this is a lot more difficult and not, not fun at all as a savvy cyclist, an informed cyclist knowing what the hazards really are. And bike lanes like this are all over Los Angeles, all over every city in the United States. And people think it's better than nothing, but nothing for me is controlling the right lane there when there's no bike lane. And very easy, got the clearance, no hassles. So I'm going to pull in here. Let's see what's going on here. What are you clapping about? What's so fun? Oh, where are you leaving? You're leaving Wisconsin? This is not Wisconsin. Oh, did you have fun? Yeah, you're on video. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. This mic is here. So, where, where did you like LA? Oh, no. I got here. Oh, you just got here? Yeah. And you're leaving already? Yes. This is crazy. Oh, that sounds good. Well, okay. Usually, when people come, they stay more than a few hours. <laughs> That's the problem, you see. I came five years ago from Illinois. Oh, really? Oh, Urbana. Well, I know, your badges, and we're fighting the line eye. Oh, but I never left. Oh, I'm um, surfing, I'm swimming in the it. ocean. Oh, you, you go to Check out everything. Go to oh, Venice, Santa, Santa Monica Pier. Oh, you're going to be here a while, right? Yeah. Oh, Venice is great. Yeah, so have fun. Go to Hollywood and go up to the Griffith Observatory. And Griffith Park, there's a great view up there. You see the Hollywood sign? Wow. Okay, well, have a great, have a great stay. I'm glad you're not leaving right away. I didn't know, I know they have planes coming through the roof. I didn't think Trader Joe's was an airport. This is great. This is Trader Joe Airport. TJS. Oh, yeah. I didn't know this was a terminal now. <laughs> right? That's great. Okay. Yeah, you too. Oh, boy. Things that you can do on a bicycle where you're not threatening, particularly looking goofy like I do at this rate, uh, is just so much fun. It adds so much to the city, to any city, to be able to talk with people without being inside a steel cage and still have the mobility to get around. I mean, cycling around a big city for me is, I mean, I grew up in New York City, and I, I was in the 60s and 70s, so uh, I was like the only cyclist around, and not a bike lane in sight. Maybe that was better. Uh, 
but I just always love the freedom of the bike. And of course, getting out in natural areas is great too. So anyway, that was a little added bonus to our first uh, Savvy Cycle, Los Angeles uh, Expedition, I'll call them. And now we're gonna head down to here and I'm going to start another segment here.